Brilliant. Good morning. It's great to be back. You know, 25 years ago, I was sat where you were sat, thinking about which A levels I'm going to do, which university I want to go to, basically what I want to be when I grow up. How many of you know what you want to be? Okay. And also, where I'm going to be in 25 years' time, right? Well, I'm here. I'm here in front of you. Um, and I've got. I'm going to talk to you the next 10 minutes and give you some advice. I'm going to talk to you a bit about what I do. Um, so, the first piece of advice I want to give you is that question about what you want to be when you grow up. Try, be, try and pick a profession that you enjoy. Okay? There's no point wanting to be a footballer or a doctor because they earn loads of money. I, I think, you know, be a footballer. If you're really good at football, if you're the best in the county or in England, be a footballer. Okay? Be a doctor if you enjoy biology, if you enjoy helping people, be a doctor. So that's the number one thing. You've got to enjoy what you do. We spend, we, you spend a, a lot, a, a big chunk of your life at work. Okay? And it's got to be something that, that, that you enjoy doing. I love what I do. I, I really do. So let me tell you a bit more about what I do. Um, so I work for a German software company. Um, and my current role is, I head up pre-sales for EMEA, which is Europe, Middle East and Africa. Uh, I've actually got promoted last week. Um, I'm now the CTO of uh, Middle East and uh, Turkey. So I'll be moving to Dubai with the family uh, in, a couple, uh, in a couple of months' time. Um, I, think, I guess that's the other tip, right? Try and travel. If you get the opportunity to go abroad on exchange visits or take a year out before you get to university, travel. It really broadens your horizons. You know, the, exposure to new cultures, new foods, new ways of doing things, it really does make you a more mature person, most definitely. So, a bit more about what I do at the moment. So, I head up a team of 100 consultants, um, and what the, what the company does is we help other organisations save money. Okay, so let me make it a bit real for you. So, how many of you got an iPhone? Okay, so Apple is one of our clients. Now, the iPhone, Apple don't make all the components in the iPhone. Um, they're made by numerous other suppliers, the screen, the battery, the button, um, etc. Okay, so there's hundreds of suppliers that Apple have that go to make the iPhone. Now what would happen if one of these manufacturers, what's the factory going there? And Apple are going to launch the iPhone 6, let's say as an example, later on in the year. And they've announced it, as they do. Okay, so one small failure, one part would stop Apple pushing that phone out on the day they promised it would meet down on their customers. Okay, so the way we've helped Apple is, we help them with our software to, to manage the supply chain. So they get upfront knowledge if there are issues with any parts uh, of, 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 of the iPhone. And if there are issues, they can switch providers or switch back. Okay, that's one. Um, orange, or as they're now known, EE. How many of you have got an Orange or EE phone now? So the, the top ups, the pay as you go. So when you call the call center and type your number in or go on the internet, that's all done by Software AG. But it's not all about saving money, it's about saving lives. Okay, so, uh, we work very closely with government agencies, we did a lot of work with some of the security agencies in the UK during the Olympics uh, to, make to, to, to thwart any potential terror attacks that, that could have happened last summer. Um, we also work with the British Army actually, so whenever the British Army are in a, in a region where there's conflict and there's landmines everywhere, uh, we've sold them software where it actually monitors where the landmines are. So if a unit is going into a battlefield, and there's a landmine here, for instance, they can get their device, like an iPad, and mark the location. Via GPS and everything, it goes back to the base. So any other units that are going to go into that area know that there's a landmine there. And then they'll send their landmine clearance team to, to clear those mines. So it's not just about making money and helping companies to save money. It's all about safety uh, and saving lives. That's one of the reasons why I love what I do. I get to talk to all these different organisations, the army, uh, government agencies. I was at HQ of uh, EE actually two weeks ago, uh, talking, um, discussing with them what their plans are, what their issues are, and how we can help them. Okay, I get to travel a lot as well. I mentioned travel earlier. So in the last six months, I've been everywhere. Um, South Africa, Turkey, I was in Saudi Arabia last week, Italy, France. And it's brilliant, like I said earlier. If you get the opportunity to travel, Travel, try and do it. It really does uh, broaden your horizons. So let me talk a bit more about my time here at Slough Grammar, 25 years ago. I owe a lot to Slough Grammar, <coughs> I really do, because 
the years that I spent at Slag Grammar, that you're spending at Slag Grammar, really do help to build that foundation, that foundation of knowledge. And that's key moving forwards. What I mean by that foundation is, all the things you learn in history, geography, maths, science, pay attention to those things, because they'll really help you. Even if you want to be a doctor, pay attention to the history and geography. Because at the end of the day, knowledge is king, right? And the basic human need to communicate with others. You need knowledge to do that. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about that, that kind of foundation. Um, how many of you know the depth of the foundations in the house that you live in at the moment? I take it most of you live in a two-story type of traditional English house, right? How many, just shout the answer out. How deep do you think the foundations are in a, in a kind of standard British house? <laughs> Sorry, what was that? 10 metres. No, not 10. It's about, it's about 1.5 metres. About 1.8 metres, right? So just take it, this is how deep the foundations are in the house that you live in. Now what would happen if you added, chopped the roof off and you added another 10 storeys? Do you think foundations this high would be able to cope with that building? What do you think would happen to that building? It would fall over. It would fall over, right? Foundations are important. If you want to reach high, think of, you need deeper foundations. Another question for you. Who knows what the highest building is in Western Europe? The Shaddy answer. The Shard. D. A couple of weeks ago, I was right at the bottom of the Shard, looking up. It's amazing. If you ever get to go to London and get close to the Shard, do this. It's amazing. I looked up. It was like that building was touching the sky, reaching for the sky. Do you know how deep the foundations are of the Shard? 70. 75 metres. 55 metres. If, if they were building it about 10 years ago, maybe it was 75 metres, but the technology is very good now. 55 metres. The point I want to make is, if you want to reach for the sky, or reach for the stars, as the school motto says, need deep foundations. And that's what you're learning about here. You know, the six, seven years you spend at Slough Grammar, that's what you're learning about. So when I studied at Slough Grammar, I was kind of a middle of the road student, right? I wasn't the A student, apart from maths. I was very good at maths. And I'd like to thank Mr. Guidus for that, because he, uh, he was my maths teacher back then. And I, I, I hope a lot of it really do. It's a shame he's not here, actually. Because I'd love to thank him personally, but I do owe him a lot. But apart from maths, where I was an A student, all the other subjects, I was kind of middle of the road, right? There were kids that got better results than me, and I still see these kids, and they always say to me, BJ, I can't believe you're doing so well. I used to get better results than you. It makes me smile. Okay, why? Because I worked hard building my foundation. So, what I, and also, <coughs> the inverse of that, I know kids that used to get really low marks, but I'm still in touch with, and they're more successful than I am. Okay? It's all about hard work, right? It's all about hard work. The other bit of advice I want to give you is, those of you that are A students that always get top marks, carry on working hard. Okay? You need to put the effort in to stay there, not just at school, when you start working, university, etc. Okay? Students like me, the kind of middle of the class students, work hard, work harder to get to that number one position. And also to, to the kids that get low marks, work hard, you can beat. Kids like me and then the A students, you know, when you, when you get out into the working life, and you could be up here in 25 years' time. Okay, so it's all about, it's all about working hard. Okay, I just want to read, I just want to finish off by reading a quote from the film. And I'd like you to guess what this film is. Okay, let me finish, let me um, finish the quote first, and I'll ask you what this film is, okay? Right, so, here's the quote. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But I, it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now if you know what you're worth, Go out and get what you're worth. But you've got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him, her, or anybody. Cowards do that. And that ain't you. You're better than that. Who knows what that thought is? <coughs> Rocky sits. It's Rocky talking to his son. Fantastic. You know what? I've got deadlines to meet. And I've got to do things for the following day. And I think, oh, I'd rather like watch TV or, or go out and play with my kids. I've got to do this. I know you, I mean, I've been where you are, right? Studying for exams, um, studying for tests. You think, oh, 
I so love the out there, I want to go and play football or tennis or what have you. But you need to work, you need to work hard, you need to put the effort in to get those, you know, to get that attainment. Go onto YouTube and do a search for Rocky Six Speaks to Sun. And just have a listen to that and it will make you work hard. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.